we perform a very simple experiment over here. We take an empty bottle and an empty tub, as you can see in the picture. And we place this empty bottle in the empty tub. What happens? Obviously, when we place the empty bottle at the base of the tub, the bottle remains there. Nothing happens. But we do the same thing with a slight twist. That is, instead of placing an empty bottle in an empty tub, we place the empty bottle inside a filled tub, filled with water. So over here, we are placing the bottle at the bottom of the tub filled with water. You will notice that despite us placing the bottle at the bottom, the bottle is coming back to the top. It is not staying at the bottom. So obviously, when the bottle is coming up, there has to be a pushing force in the upward direction. So let us see what exactly is taking place. We find that when we are placing the bottle at the bottom, it has to be held with a certain amount of force. So when we are placing the bottle, we are applying a force in order to place this bottle. So we are applying a force in the downward direction to hold the bottle. Now the moment we are leaving the bottle, what is happening? The bottle starts moving in the upward direction. It continues to move in the upward direction until a time comes when the bottle reaches the surface of the water. Now as you can see over here, the bottle is at the surface of the water in the tub. Now what exactly took place? Now we know that the empty bottle occupies a certain amount of space and has a certain amount of mass. So this is why Earth exerts a gravitational pull on the bottle in the downward direction. This gravitational pull is nothing but the weight of the bottle which is a force acting in the downward direction. Now if the weight of the bottle is acting in the downward direction, why is the bottle moving in the upward direction? Obviously, the direction of motion of the bottle is upwards despite the fact that weight is acting in the downward direction. So this means that the net force is in the upward direction. Now since there is a net force in the upward direction, something has to be pushing the bottle in the upward direction. So we can say that since the net force being exerted on the bottle is in the upward direction, countering the downward force, that is weight, this force is being applied by the water inside the tub. That is right. The water is pushing the bottle in the upward direction. So now let us find out what this force is known as. This force, that is the upward force exerted by water on the bottle is known as the buoyant force. So when we are placing the bottle in the tub, we find that it pops up. And this popping up of the bottle is due to buoyant force, which is exerted by water on the bottle. The property of a fluid to exert an upward force on a body immersed in it is known as buoyancy. So be it any fluid, a liquid or a gas, whenever an object is immersed in it, it will always exert an upward force that is known as buoyancy. Now buoyancy is not visible or understandable clearly in case of gases, but as you saw in the case of liquids, it is very easily understandable. So all objects experience a buoyant force when immersed in a liquid, and that is true irrespective of whichever object we consider. Even an object that does not move up but sinks also experiences a buoyant force. But in that case, the net force is in the downward direction because the weight happens to be greater than the buoyant force. So now let us see how we can calculate the buoyant force. There are two methods to do so. Firstly, we consider the weight of an object in air. So here we have hung it from a scale and from the grading, we can directly read the weight of the object as 10 Newton. Now let's see what happens when we place this object in water. Over here when we place the object in water, 
you can directly see from the scale that the weight is decreasing from 10 it is becoming 6 newton so when the object is being placed in water there is a loss in weight of the object that is from 10 newton to 6 newton now this loss in weight occurs why we know that the weight of the object acts in the downward direction now if there is a loss in weight it means that there has to be some sort of an upward force to balance the downward force which means that a loss in weight occurs so we can easily calculate the upward force as the difference in between these two quantities that is the weight of the object in air minus weight of the object in water why because as i mentioned since the weight always acts in the downward direction in air it is 10 newton but in water it is becoming less why because there must be some sort of force countering it in the upward direction so the loss in weight will be giving us the buoyant force so now let us find out another way in which we can calculate the buoyant force in this experiment i will demonstrate the second method of finding out the buoyant force now over here i have considered an overflow jar as you can see which is filled to the brim now the object after weighed in air is placed in water as you can see the water overflows and it enters the spout of the overflow jar but water is prevented from spilling out with the help of a cork now on the other hand an empty bucket is weighed on a scale as you can see the weight of the empty bucket in air is 2 newton and the weight of the object in water is 6 newton so let us see what happens in the experiment over here after the bucket is weighed water from the overflow jar is allowed to spill into the bucket and the bucket is weighed again the weight now comes out to be equal to 6 newton thus we found that the weight of the empty bucket was 2 newton and the weight of the bucket with the water in it was equal to 6 newton so what does this mean this means that weight of displaced water is equal to 6 minus 2 equals 4 newton and we have earlier found out from the previous experiment that buoyant force is equal to 4 newton so what does this tell us this tells us that weight of displaced water is nothing but equal to the buoyant force and this is what Archimedes has also told us so now let us find out how we can calculate the buoyant force mathematically over here we consider a metal block which has a height h1 from the surface of water that is the top surface of the block and a height h2 from the surface of the water or the bottom surface of the block now the metal block is given as having a height h so a metal block of height h and area of cross section a is completely immersed in a liquid having density rho such that the depth of the liquid from the upper surface is h1 and that from the lower surface is h2 so with this configuration we have to now find out the buoyant force now we have to consider pressure acting on the metal block in various directions so what are the pressures that are acting on this particular metal block we have lateral pressure acting from either side of the block that is in this direction now as you can see for one fixed line let's say the lateral pressure acting is at the same depth so these pressures will be equal and thus they will cancel out so lateral pressure on both sides cancel one another out now consider the other two pressures acting one will be the pressure on the upward surface acting in the downward direction and the other pressure will be at the bottom surface acting in the upward direction so we call these pressures p1 and p2 respectively so p1 is acting downward on the upper surface of the block 
and P2 is acting upward on the lower surface of the block. So these are the two pressures which we have to consider. Now we have studied earlier that pressure at any point in a fluid, in this case a liquid, is given as the depth from the water surface multiplied by the density of the liquid considered multiplied by G, that is the acceleration due to gravity. So over here P1 is equal to H1 rho G because the depth of the top surface is H1 and P2 is equal to H2 rho G because the depth of the bottom surface is H2. So now as you can clearly see H2 is greater than H1. So what does this mean? Since H2 is greater than H1 and since rho and G are constant for both, this means that P2 will be greater than P1. So net pressure since P2 is greater than P1 will be acting in the upward direction. So now let us find out how we can calculate the net pressure. The net pressure, let's call it P, will be P2 minus P1. So P2 is H2 rho G, H2 rho G minus P1, that is H1 rho G. So I write H1 rho G. Now since rho and G are the same, I can take rho G common. So what do I get? I get H2 minus H1 into rho into G. So H2 minus H1 rho G is equal to P. Now I can replace H2 minus H1 as H. So I write H2 minus H1 rho G as H into rho into G where H is nothing but H2 minus H1 or the given height of the metal block. Thus, the net pressure in the upward direction is H into rho into G. So now we know that force is nothing but pressure into area. The area of cross section of the metal block has been given as A. So I can calculate the up thrust or the buoyant force in the upward direction as pressure into area. Now we know that pressure is acting in the upward direction. So H into rho into G into A will give me the up thrust. Now consider something. A into H that we are getting A H into rho G. A H is nothing but volume of the liquid displaced. So according to Archimedes principle we know that when a particular solid or any object is placed inside a liquid then the volume of the liquid displaced is equal to the volume of the object immersed. So A H is nothing but volume of the liquid displaced because it is also equal to the volume of the block immersed. So I write it as V into rho into G. So V rho G is the equation for up thrust where V is the volume, rho is the density and G is the acceleration due to gravity. Now if V is the volume and rho is the density, what can I say? I can say that since density is equal to mass upon volume or in other words rho is equal to m upon v then I can write m as rho into v. So over here v is the volume of liquid displaced and rho is the density of the liquid. So I can write this as mass of liquid displaced into g acceleration due to gravity. Now m into g mass into acceleration due to gravity is nothing but the weight of the liquid that has been displaced. So mg can be written as w which gives me up thrust is equal to w or the weight of the liquid that has been displaced. So up thrust 
or the buoyant force is equal to W. And earlier, which we had verified experimentally, now we have verified mathematically that the buoyant force is indeed equal to the weight of the liquid that has been displaced. Therefore, upthrust is defined as weight of the fluid displaced by the immersed part of the body. In this case, since the entire solid was immersed, this gave us the upthrust. In other cases, when the entire solid or the entire body has not been immersed, then only the immersed part's weight will give us the upthrust or the buoyant force. So this forms the basis of Archimedes' principle. Archimedes' principle states that buoyant force on an object is equal to weight of displaced liquid. So the statement of the Archimedes principle is that when an object is wholly or partially immersed in a liquid, it experiences a buoyant force which is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the object. So this is the statement of Archimedes principle which states that buoyant force on an object is equal to weight of displaced liquid. And we have previously found it experimentally through two different experiments as well as mathematically, which gave us upthrust is equal to weight of liquid displaced. And that is the statement which Archimedes' principle gives us.